Our next speaker is Professor Vasudevan from um, the Inorganic and Physical Chemistry Department. He will talk to us about hydrogen bond and linear alcohols. Okay, uh, I think we are getting a little closer to James Bond now. Uh, okay, first of all, let me thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak here. I'm not one of the authors of this commemorative volume, so I guess I'm representing representing one of the five people who are not present here. Ten? Okay. I hope I do justice to them. Ten non-authors. Ten non-authors. Okay. Fine. If something goes wrong, blame them. Okay. Okay. I'm going to speak today about the hydrogen bond in linear alcohols. This is in the liquid state. So, it's going to be a little different from what Guru Rao spoke about the crystalline state. Uh, so, let me start off with acknowledgements because I have a tendency to forget that. So, the work, the ab initio molecular dynamics work was done by Aman and the NMR measurements by Ritu. This work was possible because of access to the supercomputer facility, the Cray 40 computational facility SERC and the NMR measurements were done on the GeoL ISC NMR collaboration center and allowed us to use the 500 megahertz liquids machine. Okay. So, why linear alcohols? Now, these are very strongly associating liquids, the linear alcohols and this has generally been attributed to the presence of the hydroxyl groups which has a major or a very significant influence on properties. And this can be seen by comparing for example, the properties of the alcohol with the corresponding alkene. So, if you look at any of these properties like the melting point, okay, the melting point uh, or boiling point you see that there is a big difference and this has been attributed to the presence of the hydroxyl group and this is sort of intuitively understandable. Now, so this relates much to the hydrogen bonding in the alcohols and as a starting point most people have tried to argue that the hydrogen bonding is very similar to water. So, what you would argue is that the ROH as homologues of water with R going all the way from H to ethanol, ethyl or propyl or butanol. But this is not exactly the situation because of the presence of both hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts when you are considering the linear alcohols. I am not going into after the previous speak, I am not going to really detail what the hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity is, but I will just look at it merely from an observational point. And the whole question now that we are going to address today is defining the hydrogen bond in the alcohols. So, I take uh, this thing from the current, uh, the, the cover page of the journal and as you can see it is a complex issue and the whole question of how do you define the hydrogen bond, but I am going to look at a very simplistic view, I am going to look at the geometry criteria. The geometry criteria has some advantages because it is one of the things which is intuitively understandable, of course it relates very closely to crystallography. It also is something which is sort of experimentally verifiable. So, I am going to look at the geometry criteria and what is this geometry criteria? And it just says that the hydrogen bond is defined by the relative configuration of two molecules and as long as certain critical distances and angles comply within a predefined set of distance angle threshold values, we say that there is a hydrogen bond. And for the alcohols, these are the values which have generally been taken. So, we look at the OO distance, this distance between OO, the distance between this particular distance and the angle HOO or any of those angles of the triangle. So, these are the sort of accepted values where people say that if it falls within this range of predefined distance angle values, then you have a hydrogen bond. Now, these threshold critical values at least for the distances can be experimentally verified and in fact, in principle they are determined from radial distribution functions which are obtained either from X-ray scattering or neutron scattering from the positions of the minima in the radial distribution function. But as far as the angles are concerned, it is generally just a good guess. You take a start off with a good guess value and hope that you can reproduce the properties of the bulk liquid. Now, there is also been a viewpoint that you could perhaps start off with the values which are there in the crystalline state. But if you look at the linear alcohols and ask would the crystalline state be a good starting point? And if you look at these values for 
the OHO angle, you can see that it goes from an almost linear geometry to one where it is almost perpendicular or it is 90 degrees. In other words, some of these values appear to be clearly outside the so called accepted IUPAC range of values. So, the crystalline state is probably not such a good starting point for a description of the hydrogen bonds in the liquid alcohols. And what we have done is look at molecular dynamic simulations because in principle the trajectories of these simulations contain information of both geometry as well as the thermodynamics of hydrogen bond formation. And in deference to the previous speaker, we have used a quantum method. We use ab initio MD uh, that combine finite temperature molecular dynamics. So, you are actually solving Lagrangian equations of motion, but with a quantum mechanical, which is a density functional description of the electrons as a method to study the hydrogen bonding in the liquid alcohols. Now, this is fairly well established method, the ab initio molecular dynamics. There are many textbooks written on this. So, I am not going to go into details of this. We use something known as the car parallelo molecular dynamics. And okay, so these are just some uh, details of the simulation. So, this is a fairly large simulation. We start up with about 100 alcohol molecules in a cubic box with periodic boundary conditions. So, this is a big system. Uh, the dimensions of the box are chosen so that they reproduce the experimental density of the, of the liquid. Uh, then we have started off with initial wave function optimization. We do CPMD simulations. And this was done on this on the clay machine because I think it needs a, a lot of computational time. These are some of the actual technical details and the measurements were done on uh, NV, NVE ensemble uh, and we used the uh, BLYP uh, gradient corrected density functional with the empirical dispersion correction agreement. Subsequently, we have tried other functionals, but this is the one of choice. So, when we do these simulations, the first question that we ask is, are these results of the simulations truly representative of the liquid? And one way of looking at that is to compare the calculated radial distribution functions with what has already been experimentally determined either from X-ray scattering or from neutron scattering. So, X, especially from neutron scattering data where you can do isotopic substitution, you can substitute H for D and which induces a big change in the scattering cross section, you can work out the partial radial distribution functions. Now, the typical way for example, when you mentioned, when I mentioned earlier about the threshold values for ROO or ROHO, these are taken from the positions of the first minima in the radial distribution function. But unfortunately, the radial distribution functions involves an isotropic averaging and therefore, all angular information is lost. But the question that we asked is whether our ab initio simulations are truly representative of the liquid. A comparison and a good agreement clearly suggests that the answer is yes. Now, what we do next is to try and derive geometrical information about the hydrogen bond by looking at pairs of molecules in our ensemble. So, we take a pair, for example, if it's an ethanol, if you're looking at a simulation of ethanol molecules. We take a pair of ethanol molecules, okay. We take a, and for each pair that we pick up, we measure these distances, the RHOO, the OHO, and this angle. So, each point in this scatter plot represents these three coordinates, okay. So, what we have done is that we, have, we run our MD simulations. And from these simulations, we start picking up pairs of ethanol molecules or if you were doing for say propanol or butanol, we pick up a pair of butanol molecules and measure these three geometrical parameters. And each point here represents these three coordinates of a pair of molecules. Now, you can see that if I plot it in this way, there is a clear separation. There is a region which sort of separates out in the scatter plot. And this region which separates out is one of short distances and short angles and we say that this is the region of interest for hydrogen bonding. But you can see that how do I draw this ellipsoid? Okay, how do I draw this ellipsoid? Do I, 
Can I shrink it? Should I put it slightly larger? So for to, to identify the outliers of what the actual distribution is, we go to what we call as the, we use a standard statistical mechanical, statistical analysis attributed to Mahalnobis. We calculate for each of the points here, we calculate the Mahalnobis distance. The Mahalnobis distance of an observation is from uh, the mean, is described the mean and covariance matrix. And this is what this then tells you is, we can then say is a point part of the distribution or is it an outlier. Now in our case, we found that for each of these variables, whether it's the ROO or the angle, the distribution is Gaussian. And therefore, we can, we can, we can identify the, um, the Mahalnobis distances by a chi-square distribution. And what we then do is to plot the square of the Mahalnobis distance and use, so it follows a chi-square distribution. And therefore, you have a cutoff value of 3.2, which describes the 97.5 percentile, which is the standard value which is taken. When you do that, you can then identify outliers. So what we have done is, from the first figure here, where this was the hydrogen bonding region, by using this statistical analysis using Mahalnobis distances, we are able to identify the outliers in red. So now we are able to define or able to get off the cutoff values. And these are the cutoff values from our scatter plot. This is the Mahalnobis distance obtained from the Mahalnobis distances. These are the values. And this is the centroid of the distribution. Now, there are a couple of interesting observations here. One is that it tends to be an almost linear geometry, okay, very close to being linear. And two, there's not much change in the angle or the geometrical parameters which define the hydrogen bond irrespective of the alkyl chain length, okay. Now, this sounds a little difficult perhaps to comprehend, but so what we really need to do is, can we do, is there an experimental verification for this? And to do that, we turn to NMR methods and we try to look at the geometry of the hydrogen bonds in liquid ethanol by NMR measurements. And what we have done is the following. We exploit the so-called secondary isotope effect. So we take a mixture of ethanol, okay, we take a mixture of ethanol and a deuterated one, okay. Now, the chemical shifts of the methyl group in these two are different because of the secondary isotope effect. And so also the hydroxyl protons. So if I take a one is to one mixture of the two, if I take a one is to one mixture of the two, I can see features which can go clearly be attributed to the deuterated compound and that to the normal ethanol. So once I get this mixture of the two, what I then do is to, I do an NOE distance measurements. Okay, this is a nuclear Oerhauser effect measurement. We know very well know that the nuclear Oerhauser effect is a dipolar interaction. It goes to R to the power of six. And we know that the NOE buildup, NOE buildup goes, is dipolar and goes as the sixth power of the distance. Okay. And we also know that if we then take the ratio of these two dis distances, we'll get the ratio of these two uh, intensities, then you can get the ratios of the distances. So let me explain what the experiment is. So what we do is that in the one is to one mixture, one is to one mixture, we selectively invert the, the methylene protons. Now methylene protons belong only to one, okay, it's just to the normal ethanol because we recall that the deuterated one is CD2. And then we selectively invert this and look at the intensities of the two hydroxyl peaks which are attributed one to the protonated compound and one to, sorry, one to the deuterated compound and one to the protonated compound. And then we look as a function at different mixing times, we look at how the intensities change on excite or selective inversion of this of the of this methylene proton. When we do that and we look at these two intensities, what we are getting is the ratio of the distances of the methylene proton to the OH proton. In one case it's intermolecular and in the other case it's intramolecular. Okay. We then repeat the experiment, but this time we excite the methyl proton of one 
the methyl proton of 1 and repeat this experiment. What we do from here, get from here, we get them, what we are measuring in the previous experiment is the ratio of the intra and intermolecular distances between the CH2 protons and the OH protons. And the second experiment what we do is that we get the ratio of the intra and intermolecular distances between the methyl protons and the hydroxyl protons. So, between these two we get the following ratios, we, from the NMR experiments we get these ratios, what the first one we call ratio 1 which is this between the methyl and the hydroxyl and in the other one sorry between the methylene and the hydroxyl and the second one between the methyl and the hydroxyl. So, once we got these two ratios what we do is we can now construct pairs of molecules which satisfies this or not what we have done is to actually go back to our simulations and from the MD trajectories pick up all pairs of molecules that simultaneously satisfy the NOE distance criteria. And these are some of the few representative pairs in the simulations which satisfy this NOE distance criteria. And for this, this for these pairs of molecules I looked at the ROHO and the R and the angle and I find that this is a normal distribution a Gaussian distribution with a mean value in this particular case of 1.9 angstroms with a plus or minus 0.15 and this is about 13.3 plus or minus 4.5 which lies well within or uh, close to the centroid values which we found for from our simulations. And so this gives us a little bit of confidence in the results from our simulation because we are able to ex verify it experimentally. Okay. The other interesting observation is that for the molecules and for which lie within this distribution there appears to be a linear relationship between in this accepted base between the OHO distance and the OHO angle. Okay, there appears to be a linear relationship between the two. So, strong directionality appears to be the key feature of hydrogen bonds in the liquid alcohols and this of course as Professor Guru Rao mentioned earlier is what everyone says. So, if I look at the probability distribution, this is the distance angular probability distribution, this is just a projection of the scatter plot on, on to two dimensions. You can see clearly see that you have the majority of the points lying at short angles and at these distances. This is of course for ethanol, but same is true for all the other molecules that we have studied from methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol and pentanol. Okay. Now, the next question that we asked is the following, can we, can we using this data get an idea of the strength of the hydrogen bond? Okay. So, so now we we'll move slight shift gears a little bit. From defining the hydrogen bond, we have got now a geometric criteria which defines the hydrogen bond and now we move on to looking at a little bit on the thermodynamics or the energetics of hydrogen bond formation. Okay. So, we the starting point of our calculations now is going to be that the hydrogen bond formation will be considered as a passage from a random orientation of the OHO to an oriented almost linear arrangement. So, essentially what we are saying is that hydrogen bond formation in the liquid alcohols or for any of these systems which have got HOH including water then what we say is that the unhydrogen bonded state is one where the OHO angles are random and that whereas the hydrogen bonded state is the oriented state. And we consider this as an equilibrium reaction. Now, we already calculated what the probability distribution, the radial probability distance distribution is P r of theta is what I had shown you earlier. This except a three dimensional plot of that where the this axis shows the intensity of the probability. If you have a random, if you have no particular orientation, random orientation, we can calculate again uh, what p random theta is going to be and that is what this distribution is going to be like. We then say that since it is an equilibrium reaction, the potential of mean force or the free energy associated with the passage from a random orientation to state of ordered or oriented this thing is given by delta G PMF which is the potential of mean force is minus RT log in K 
and that is just given by minus RT log n of the two probabilities, the radial probability distribution. And if I do this, this is what my PMF, the potential mean force or the delta G PMF for hydrogen bond formation looks like as a function of R and theta. Okay. So, I have done this for the various alcohols and this shows uh, a one dimensional profile take it at the point where P R of theta is a maximum which is about 3 degrees okay. and this shows the variation, it shows the variation in the well in the depth well as a for the various alcohols. Now, if I integrate over this entire surface, if I integrate over the entire surface, I will get delta G P M F and that is what I do in the next step. I have integrated it over the entire surface using the cutoff values, the integral limits are given by the cutoff values which I defined earlier and if I multiply this quantity with the average number of hydrogen bonds per molecule, then I will get the delta G for hydrogen bond formation for my linear alcohols and this shows how the variation occurs. We find that it is lowest for ethanol, okay, lower than that for methanol and steadily increases. So, this is the delta G for hydrogen bond formation for the linear alcohols. Now, this raises up a couple of questions. One is why do we observe this variation? Okay, why do we observe this variation? Now, it might appear that there is no obvious explanation as the intermolecular OHO geometrical parameters are comparable. If you recall in the first slide of the first part of the talk, I had shown you the, the centroid and the cutoff values, they appeared very similar. Now, if you are going to attribute the, van, the hydrogen bonding to various interactions like covalency or van der Waals or dispersive, you would expect that they would be sensitive to the geometrical parameters. Okay. So, if the geometrical parameters are identical, it will be hard to explain why we observe a variation. Okay. The one possibility and this has been uh, widely discussed in the literature about the strength of the hydrogen bond is that it could be an electric, the electrostatic contributions could be different because of the charge on the hydroxyl oxygen. Now, the way we do our calculations to observe to obtain charges is a little difficult okay, because we in our calculations where we do the uh, ab initio molecular dynamics, we express our, the electronic part in terms of plane waves which are diffuse and so it is not possible to do a straightforward molecular population analysis and, and fix charges. So, what is usually done is that you project the plane waves onto an auxiliary set of slater orbitals and this is a very minimal basis set. So, for carbon it is just 1 s 2 s 2 p and then do a molecular population analysis but the accuracy will depend actually depends on the accuracy of the projection. But nevertheless, we can have a look at what happens. So, this is our observed variation of delta G for the liquid alcohols and if you were to compare this with the calculated charges, we find that there is a fairly good correlation between the elect the charge on the oxygen atom and the variation in the charge on the oxygen atom and the change in the delta G. Now, of course, this does not mean that the bond is electrostatic, it only means that there are small differences in the electrostatic contribution to the hydrogen bond. So, to summarize then, I have come to the end of my talk, to summarize then the OHO hydrogen bond in the liquid alcohols from methanol to pentanol are strongly oriented almost linear and this is in contrast to the crystalline state where there is where you have marked departure from linearity with increasing alkyl chain length. Hydrogen formation is considered as the passage from a random orientation of the OHO to an ordered arrangement and the potential of mean force for this passage is lowest for ethanol and steadily increases with alkyl chain length and the variation shows an apparent correlation with the charge on the oxygen atom. So, thank you and finally, I would like to acknowledge Professor Arunan for introducing me to the hydrogen bond. Okay, I, a couple of years back I was not, I, this is far removed from the type of work I did, but thanks to Professor Arunan who got me interested in this. Thank you. Okay, so, now we have some time for questions. Oh. Yes. Actually, the final observation is <coughs> quite interesting. 
you know hcn and hnc have very similar dipole moment but hnc forms stronger hydrogen bonds yeah. the charge on hnc hydrogen is higher than charge on hcn yeah. i think the charge dipole is probably a more accurate description of hydrogen bond than dipole dipole and it's quite interesting any other questions or comments Yeah, yeah, it looks like ethanol is interesting everywhere. <laughs> Why is that? I'll tell you. Hopefully, I'll be able to explain it in the evening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? <laughs>